How's it going YouTube? Got 4 Star TCG here and back in front of the green screen with another discussion video. Uh, so in the spirit of giving you the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth about the uh, Pokemon hobby, today we're going to tackle something that has been a serious topic of discussion, uh, especially on the forum, uh, all over YouTube, uh, and especially within the graded Pokemon card community. So has PSA recently switched to a more harsher method of grading Pokemon cards? Uh, is it harder to achieve a 10 now than it was several years ago? Uh, and my favorite of the three are PSA certification numbers that start with a four. Are these grades better than those that start with a two? Now, this is quite the claim, and it requires quite the analysis to go through and determine whether it's true. But today we're going to give it a fair shake, we're going to look at the realities and the data, uh, but I'll give you a little overview before we get, <laughs> before we get into the thick of it. Uh, this is something that polarizes a lot of people, so uh, first we're going to look at the reality of PSA grading and Pokemon cards. Uh, this reality has been there in the past, and it shows no signs of stopping. So second, we're going to look at some actual statistics, uh, not just people on YouTube uh, or anecdotal reports. We're going to look at actual statistics regarding the number of tens which PSA is assigning to cards. And third, lastly, we're going to critically examine both the reality of the grading and the statistics. We're going to push all this together to determine the validity of this claim. Uh, is PSA harsher now than they were in the past? So, as promised, first let's discuss PSA grading and Pokemon as a whole. Uh, so, the hard truth, again, giving you the truth, is that PSA is an imperfect method for evaluating the condition of Pokemon cards. Uh, it's the best method we currently have. PSA is better than BGS, it's better than GMA, it's better than ungraded eBay sellers telling you what condition their cards are in, uh, but it's imperfect nonetheless. Now, condition evaluations are subjective. Now, subjective means that one person's assessment of a card's condition can occasionally differ from someone else's. That's just the reality of subjectivity. Now, <laughs> we all know this very well. Uh, some people's or even popular singles websites, t and uh, their ideas of near mint are occasionally what others would describe as maybe excellent or light played. Uh, so these discrepancies are minimized with the advent of trained third-party graders. Now, it's very unlikely that a PSA grader is going to see a card with a crease running through it and rate it mint. So PSA's contribution to the Pokemon market is that they compact the possible conditions that you may receive a card in when you get it in the mail. So I put up a small graphic of what I mean here. So here's the possible conditions that I'd get if I purchased a card from eBay. Uh, and it's supposedly mint. So it can range anywhere from maybe a nine down to a six if there's a crease in it. Uh, most of the time it's gonna be within that nine to eight, but the range of conditions it's going to arrive in is much greater than if I purchase a PSA 9 card. Uh, so here's the uh, diagram for a PSA 9 card. As you can see, that box is shorter. Uh, the PSA 9 card is not going to have a crease in it. 99.99% of the time, that PSA 9 card is not going to have any major issues. Now, however, the important thing to note is that there's still a range. Uh, PSA graders are human. Every PSA 9 you get is not going to look the same. Every 8 is not going to look the same. Now this means that PSA graders, they overlook flaws, they spot flaws that aren't present, and 
generally each PSA grader may not have the same answer for one card's grade. So if I take a card that if it was possible to have a perfect PSA 9 condition card and I send that card in 20 times, chances are that for the majority of those submissions it's going to score a 9. But occasionally it may score an 8 and occasionally it may score a 10. This is what I mean when I talk about grading subjectivity. This subjectivity, combined with the very rare occasions when actually serious mistakes are made, creases are missed, uh, significant dents are overlooked, means that it's very easy to pick out so-called bad grades from PSA. Given the number of cards that are submitted, I believe PSA is taking in about 70,000 cards a week. Uh, that was the last, uh, last reported number. Even if the relative percentage likelihood of a bad grade, a misgraded card, is very small, there's still going to be a fair few floating around just because of the numbers that are being submitted. Now, these bad grades are functions of the subjectivity of grading, and they're not unique to any time period. So I have a lot of bad grades from the two cert range, and boy have I got a lot of bad grades from the four cert range. I see them all the time. I have, the, I have a couple in my collection. Uh, and given this, it's not logically sound to evaluate this argument by looking at small sample sizes. You can't take a number of good four cert cards and compare them to bad two cert cards. And it also wouldn't be logically sound to do the opposite in order to counter this argument, comparing good two cert grades to bad four cert grades. Both of these arguments are flawed. So we need to avoid cherry picking and possibly biased data from single submissions, uh, from small sample sizes. So how do we get out of this sort of, how do we get out of just looking at single cards uh, and single submissions? Well, we need to look at much larger amounts of data. So let's look at the largest amount of data that we can get. Let's look at the entire PSA population report. Uh, let's look at changes in the population report over time and changes in the amounts of tens issued. Uh, so my friend Pokemon Flying Master, he investigated this issue as well. Uh, and he has written a program that scrapes the PSA population report for Pokemon. And this shows the percentage of tens graded versus lower grades awarded for each month since 2017. Now he's got a video on this. His video is about 20 minutes long. Uh, it goes through a lot more than I can do here, and it's much more nuanced uh, than what I can do justice to his argument. But I've linked the video below, and I strongly encourage you to watch it, uh, watch the entire thing if you've got the time, uh, as again, he goes into uh, much more depth with the actual data. So here's his graph of the grades assigned to early Watsi era hollows from 2017 to present. So you've got tens in blue, nines in yellow, and green uh, eights are in green. Now keep in mind that this analysis uh, it doesn't include the lower grade, so anything seven and below isn't even included. Uh, so as you can see, the percentage of tens being awarded to Watsi era cards or Watsi or Hollows, it has significantly decreased over time. Uh, back in 2017 and even 2018, around 18 to 20 percent of Hollows graded eight or above were graded tens. And towards the end of 2019 and in the first few months of 2020, this has decreased to around seven to eight uh, percent being graded tens. Now this certainly seems to support the hypothesis that PSA has been harsher on grades in the recent months. However, keep in mind that this data, that decrease in tens, only supports the claim that the grading standards have been increased if the same quality of cards is submitted from 2017 to 2020. 
So for example, the drop, the drop in graded tens, it could easily be explained by other factors. Uh, most notably, you know, people submitting cards that aren't in as good condition as they used to be. Now, this is a clearly logical explanation as you know, cards do become harder to find in mint condition as time goes on. But how can we distinguish whether the grading is actually harsher, whether the standards have been so-called changed, or whether people are just submitting lower grade, lower condition cards for PSA grading. So how do we do this? Well, the best way is to look at some form of control group, uh, where we can broadly expect that the condition of the cards has remained the same. If we're not sure that Watsi has remained the same, let's look at something where we are sure that it's remained the same from 2017 to 2020. So ideally, this control group would have a high, high card quality, and we want a significant number of submissions as well. We want a strong sample size. And the benefits of this are that any discrepancies in the 10 rates, we can see them easily. Uh, they're not the result of random chance, uh, and they're statistically significant as well. So what's the best group for this? Well, it's modern sun and moon. Uh, the quality is high, the submission rates are high, so if we look at modern Sun and Moon era cards and we see the rate of 10s decreasing from 2017 to 2020, then this supports the hypothesis that grading is harsher. So let's take a look at the graph for modern submissions. Here it is. Uh, now when we look at this graph, we don't see the decrease in tens that we see in Watsi. In fact, the rate of tens has broadly stayed the same with modern sun and moon between the two certs and the four certs between 2017 and 2020. The rate stays at around 60% of cards graded eight or above that are graded tens. So assuming that most of these sun and moon cards are coming fresh out of the pack, they haven't had a lot of time to be thrown around and played, and thus they provide a solid control group, we see no change in grading standards across time. So now the big picture. What does all of this mean, and is it true that PSA is harsher these days? Well, you know, none of us are PSA graders, so we can't know for certain, but we can look at the realities of the data and the realities of PSA grading and Pokemon cards, the inconsistencies that have always been there, the misgrades that are always there, even though they're a small percentage. You know, because PSA consistently misgrades a small percentage of cards, it's easy to cherry pick these from the entire population and to make an argument from exception based on these outliers. So, same as some people, they'll put some bad two certs against some great four certs, we could reverse it. But as we talked about, that's not a logical way to evaluate this argument. And given the requisite information and a larger number of cards, I could argue, I could argue something ridiculous. I could argue that you know, cards graded on Tuesdays are graded harsher or more leniently than those graded on Fridays. Uh, so, in order to evaluate this argument, we have to look at the broad-based data. And when we look at that data, when we look at the graphs, when we look at Watsi, when we look at Modern, we do find circumstantial support for this claim. PSA is giving out less 10s for early-era Watsi hollows than they were in 2017. That's just an empirical fact. However, when we look at the other eras, when we look at sun and moon, we don't see the same pattern. If there was a change in grading standards, if PSA got harsher, then we would expect to see that decrease that we see in Watsi mirrored in sun and moon. We want to see an across the board decrease in 10 rates to support the claim, and we don't see it. 
So this clearly, it, it, it refutes the claim that PSA has increased their standards recently. And furthermore, I've spoken with people who have graded since the beginning, who've been submitting large numbers of cards to PSA for years. They submitted in the one certs, they submitted in the two certs, they submitted in the four certs, and they all say the same thing. They all say that there has been no discernible increase in grading difficulty. But the question still remains, how do we explain the decrease in those Watsi tents? Why has that percentage gone down so low? And I think the best answer really is twofold. Uh, first, the mint cards are becoming a lot harder to find. Uh, Watsi hollows have been expensive for a while, people have been seeking them out for a while, and I think it's a safe bet to say that there are a lot less 10 candidate Watsi hollows out there today than there were back in 2017. Uh, keep in mind that in 2017 people were breaking boxes left and right as well. So additionally, as these Watsi PSA 10 hollows become worth thousands of dollars, the market's skyrocketing lately, the PSA 9s have followed suit. Uh, they've started to drastically increase as well. And this makes it more financially viable for people to submit cards that may not have had a chance at that 10 grade. So back in 2017, the value of 9s was very low. You could get most PSA 9 Watsi hollows for you know, sub $50 or something. And submitting a card in hopes of a 9 was often, it just wasn't a good financial decision. You wouldn't make money by doing it. Uh, so all in all, the data really does not support the claim that PSA has increased their grading standards recently. So now I want to deal with the most common manifestation of the grading harshness claim. Uh, it's the idea that four certs, cards with a certification number starting in four, they're better grades than cards starting with a two. Uh, so on the graph, here's the uh, Watsi graph. The black line in May of 2018 is where the four certs begin. So as you can see, the rates of 10s, they actually stay broadly the same for months afterwards, uh, months after the start of the four certs. Uh, they only really begin to decrease significantly in recent months. So even if you believe that PSA has increased their grading standards, if you ignore the data presented here, you go off of your own personal experience or some other YouTube videos you've seen, and you accept that these decreases are solely the result of PSA changing standards using just that four certification number as an indicator of when those standards changed. That's just flawed, even considering the data. All right, so what's the solution to all of this? Uh, maybe you believe the empirical data, maybe you believe me, and maybe you don't. That's fine, either one. But the answer for everyone, no matter what you think about the grading standards, what you think about PSA, it's simple. Buy the card, not the grade. It's a reality that PSA misgrades cards. I'm no PSA apologist, they need to be better. There are many things that PSA is doing significantly badly. But in the meantime, hopefully while PSA improves, you need to critically evaluate each card that you're purchasing. You need to use the PSA grade as a guideline to inform your purchasing decisions, not as a beacon of infallibility that this card is exactly in this described condition and that condition meets with what my personal idea of that condition is. If the card doesn't meet your standards, then just don't buy it. Look for a better one. Wait for another one to pop up. You know, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the matter, uh, so be sure to let me know what you think in the comments section below. Uh, this is quite the topic, so really looking forward to some discussion. <laughs> so thank you all very much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. I uh, hope you enjoyed, and stick around for more videos.